Good morning, everyone. We're going to start with a fun song that will get us all awake. It's Allelu Allelu, number 367, if you have your gray hymnals, but I'll lead you through it. And I'm going to stand up, so I invite you all to stand or sit tall. And the other thing you need to do is to choose your part. It starts with Allelu. Allelu, 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 Alleluia. And then the second part answers sing and rejoice so choose which part they go back and forth and i'm going to ask you to stand when you sing and sit when you don't or raise your hand when your part's singing and switch i'll be switching you don't switch you just raise your hand this will be the first part on this side second part on this side so we'll go back and forth um it's a little crazy. It switches in the middle, but we're going to have a lot of fun. So here's the beginning. Ready? Allelu, 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 alleluia. Other part. Sing and rejoice. First part. Allelu, 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 alleluia. Sing and rejoice. Sing and rejoice. Alleluia. Sing and rejoice. Alleluia. Sing and rejoice. Alleluia. Both. Sing and rejoice. That's the whole song. So it's so short, we're going to do it again. We're going to do it two more times. And if you mess up, just laugh. This is fun. So um, I'm going to invite, I think there's a way, uh, just briefly, for us to unmute ourselves. 
So you might hear kind of a cacophony of sound, but that'll be fun to hear each other today. You ready? Unmute if you want. Oh, that was so great to hear your voices. We're going to do it one more time. You ready? I'm awake now. I hope you are. <laughs> I invite you to maybe sit comfortably, sit up tall, because we're going to practice a little something that helps me. In this time of pandemic, I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm really frustrated. Sometimes I'm sad. I'm missing people. Nothing feels quite right. And it's helpful to have a practice, a practice of something that helps us when things aren't quite right. And often it begins with breathing. And so we're going to sing the song. Some of you know meditation on breathing for this. But I'm first going to tell you a little funny story about it. Uh, years ago, I had a children's choir and they learned this song. <clears throat> and one summer when they came back from vacation, one of the fathers of one of the kids in the choir told me that this song saved his marriage. Now, I don't know if that was really true, but that's what he said. They were on a family trip and they were driving and driving and driving somewhere in the middle of the country and he fell asleep. Oh, he wasn't driving, by the way. His wife was driving, she didn't fall asleep. He fell asleep for quite a while and when he woke up, he realized she had gone, taken a wrong turn and gone way the wrong way. Hours out of their way, this meant. And he was so frustrated, but even though he felt like yelling, instead he thought of this song, which starts with breathe in, breathe out, when I breathe in. So inside his head, he kept singing that song and it helped him not yell at his wife. So when he came back, he told me, thank you, thank you for teaching this song. It was part of me, so it was there when I needed it. And it really helped the whole family, helped save his marriage, helped the whole family trip. So the thing about these songs or a practice that helps us is that you do have to practice so that you know them and that your body knows them. So that when you start singing, your body remembers, oh yeah, I can relax, I can calm down, this will help me. Even if you just do it inside your head. So we're gonna sing this song together and it starts with breathe in, breathe out. You can stay right there the whole time or you can follow my voice and layer in the other parts. We're gonna use a recording so you hear the other parts, but I'd like you to settle in and focus on your breathing and we'll see if this is a good practice that will help us. So let's go. You'll hear it in a minute, rather soft, breathe in, breathe out. Meanwhile, just breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. I'll start singing, but it's soon the audio breathe should come on. There you go. In, breathe out, breathe in.
Breathe in, breathe out. I hope that song helped you like it helped me. And it's something you can remember. And even if you're at school or somewhere where you can't sing out loud, you can sing it inside your heart. You could sing it before a meal. You could sing it when you're feeling a little mad at your sibling and you don't want to yell. It can help you stay calm and focused. And that's what I use it for. So I hope it helps you too. Thanks. Music has been my constant companion, even my calling throughout my faith journey and throughout my life. In 1990, my first son, Ben, was born. And since he was transverse, which is sideways, he would not move his head down. And we lived an hour from the hospital. I knew he would likely arrive via a scheduled C-section. Quite disappointed knowing I wouldn't be able to hold him immediately due to an IV and the blood pressure cuff, I asked if it would be okay if I could sing to him. So I sang to him for 30 minutes as his father held him near me and they stitched me up and made sure we were both okay. My first memories of Ben were his big, then gray, wide open eyes looking at me calmly as I sang such songs as Swing low, sweet chariot. It was only months later that I learned it was more rhythmic songs that helped jiggle him to sleep. Something like shake, rattle and roll, shake, rattle and roll, shake, rattle and roll, shake, rattle and roll. That's what he really liked. His first memory at age two is of him sitting with me at the foot of my father's bed as we sang to his grandfather all the lullabies and children's songs that Ben knew. And sometime during this time, my father grew quiet and he died peacefully in his bed at home about two hours later. Now he had been really sick, so we knew he was going to die so we weren't surprised, but we were still sad, but we were so happy we could sing for him. Many of you may know that this gray hymnal, which came out just three years after Ben was born, is called Singing the Living Tradition. So what might that mean? When I first started at the congregation where I served for over 25 years, Valley UU in Chandler, Arizona, I have to say they did not sing very well, unlike you all who sing very well. They just mumbled. And I clearly remember that first day I attended, having taken one-year-old Ben there to keep him safely from the moving truck as all our belongings were being unloaded. And I sat out in the congregation thinking, either they have to let me help them or I need to go somewhere else because I can't stand this lackluster singing. You may or may not be able to tell over Zoom, but I am very kinesthetic. I move around, and I had trouble even sitting still during that service. Luckily, the then minister invited me to help song lead, and so I started on a mission to find out why they weren't singing well and what could be done about it. After going through five years of back orders of service, I discovered that there were maybe four or five songs that they knew extremely well, such as Morning Has Broken or For the Beauty of the Earth. And then there were over 100 hymns that they sang only once, never to be repeated again. Now, clearly the hymns were mostly chosen by how well the text fit the sermon topic. And without a song leader, the initial singing of these songs wasn't very successful. They were usually not attempted again, at least not until the uncomfortable memory of trying to stumble through them had faded. 
So I started to introduce a hymn of the month, teach, teaching the hymns, song leading, and repeating them often until they became a living tradition. The name of this book, Singing Our Living Tradition. Within a few years, Valley UU became known as that singing congregation. Now this is an incredibly strange and challenging time in the history of our country and of our world right now. Some people are able to cope better than others because of their own circumstances, their resources, maybe they have lots of support, no doubt the resilience of their personalities, Social scientists and our own experience have taught us that often the best way to deal with what is causing us anxiety is to look it straight in the eye. If we deny our fear and stress, it often takes a toll on our bodies and on our psyches. So let's name it. Nothing feels normal, and we're tired of staying home, we're tired of being careful. Some have suffered loss of health, many of us loss of connection, and we miss group singing. There may be hidden blessings during this pandemic time, but sometimes those blessings feel lost on us. Some of us have less to do, while others have more to do, or at least more worries. Even now, at home in our own houses, maybe our minds are just just racing. Brrr. Either time clicks by too slowly, or it goes too fast. Tick 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 but slow that clicking down. If you have a watch on, I invite you to take it off. If you have a cell phone nearby, I invite you to pull it, put it out of arm's reach for right now. I invite you to take a couple of deep breaths. Maybe even sigh out loud. Oh. Let the music be what it needs to be for you this morning. that really matter. We seek ways to sweep away the stress. Music can give us a way to just be and not always do. 
Perhaps this is the blessing of the pandemic time. Just go back to mystery, mystery. Life is a riddle and a mystery, mystery, mystery. Life is a riddle and a mystery. Where do we come from? What are we? Where are we going? Where do we come from? What are we? Where are we going? Stone, <clears throat> a touchstone in wrenching times, reminding us of the joy somewhere and providing beauty even in the midst of pain. have joy or sorrows on your mind today, it can help to name them. So I invite you to put them in the chat right now. Take a little time to name your joys and sorrows.
Breathing in, breathing out. We honor all that is in our hearts today. Songs need to be sung often to come alive. And for them to be truly part of our living tradition, at least some of them need to be sung by heart and off book, because that is when they become part of us and are available when we need them. As we sing a benediction, as we sing a dedication song to a new baby, as we comfort someone at bedside who is sick, when we're at a march for justice or an evening prayer vigil, <clears throat> as we open a congregational meeting that we know might have some tension around a controversial issue. And what I call circular music is the best kind of music to become the name of this hymnal, a living tradition. And if you were at last night's Sacred Sing, you know what kind of songs I'm talking about. These are songs that are simple and repetitive, such as chants, choruses of longer songs, maybe simple rounds, even just a couple of repeated phrases. And some songs like Spirit of Life, which we just sang, or Blue Boat Home, which we'll sing in a little bit. Some are UU favorites across the nation. And they have almost become circular in feeling, even though they have more words and don't repeat like a true circular song. Most of us have learned Spirit of Life so well, we can sing it without the book. And we can sing it truly from the heart. Now, some people, may I dare say the most trained musicians, think that so-called circum circular music sometimes is too simplistic. But it's in its very simplicity and its repetitive quality that it helps us feel a depth of emotion that can transcend a sense of normal time and space. This type of singing has a kind of power that a more wordy song, however poetic and wonderful, rarely achieves. Some years ago, I was honored to sing for a congregant a few hours before he died. He'd always been an active man, an engineer, and in, in retirement, he was the Mr. Fix-It person in the congregation. I had sung with him several times over the last few months of his life, and he always requested something lively. And this day was no different. So I sang, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. And I sang, gonna lay down my sword and shield down by the riverside, down by, down. I also sang Spirit of Life, even though that's a little less lively. But because we had been singing these songs frequently for the last 50, 15 years in that church, <clears throat> they were alive with meaning and memory for him. Familiar songs can also help with life review, 
which is a natural tendency towards reviewing and putting memories and life events into a meaningful context at the end of life within the whole of our lives. For over 10 years, I led a group of women who sang at bedside for those recovering from surgery or illness and also those in hospice care. Some of those moments sharing the beauty and compassion of the human voice with a person in the last days of their lives were incredibly meaningful. Meaningful for the families, for the person, but also for the singers. When one of our singers' elderly father became suddenly and gravely ill, our singer was terrified that she wouldn't be able to be with him when he was still conscious or be there at the time of death. So we hit upon the idea that we could sing to him over the phone. This long distance singing session was the, one of the most memorable times we ever had in our years of singing to others and for each other. I'll never forget it. Singing can connect us, connect us to our memories, to other people, it is stored in the brain in a different place than words. So for instance, someone who is suffering from dementia may not be able to converse anymore, but they can often still sing. I clearly remember singing Christmas carols one year in an assisted living home when a woman who hadn't spoken in months suddenly started singing with us. Her visiting family members burst into tears. Singing offers a way to still connect, to have quality of life. The Mr. Fix-It man died peacefully just a few hours after my last singing visit. Now right now, it is heartbreaking to know some people during this pandemic time are so extremely isolated and they may not be able to have visitors, let alone a singing visit. But one of the blessings of this time is technology. We can still phone, we can use Zoom, and more than just for words, we can use Zoom for the magic of music. Now, unfortunately, some of us have become mostly consumers of music. What we hear on a professional recording or a CD has trained our ears to think music must be perfect to be good. All the nasal edges, harsh tones, and off-pitch endings have been manufactured out. But music's real power comes from its aliveness and from its being created in time and space right here, right now. And singing, especially, is the most alive and intimate form of music because it only exists on the out-breath. <sighs> because we are alive. <sighs> it is close to laughter. Singing is close to laughter, to crying, to gasping, even to moaning. Everyone. Every person has a musical child inside, even if it was squelched long ago. A teacher may have said, hey, you at the end of the third row, just, just move your lips. And maybe you've been hesitant to sing out ever since. Music in worship is not about performance. It's about finding ways that we can all express our song together, this gift of being human. There's an African proverb that some of you may have heard, and that is, if you can speak, you can sing, and if you can walk, you can dance. And I would go even further and say, even those, those who have lost their ability to speak, for whatever reason, still have a song in their hearts. Music and worship can have different functions. 
depending on when it happens in the service. It can give voice to our feelings. It can bring depth to a ritual. It can provide a smooth transition. It creates a sense of community. It even gives voice to a prayer. We listen with our hearts as much or even more than our ears. And when we make music together, rather than just listen, we lift up the power of the group voice and something incredible happens. And this is what we're missing so much right now. And yet, we can use our imagination our creativity to keep that power alive, knowing we will sing with even more gusto when we are together again in person. Now, I'm not saying that what I'm calling circular music should be the primary form of music in worship, just that there are good reasons to keep it regularly in the mix of music. With the departure of your music director at the end of last year, and now this current time of uncertainty with congregational life mostly occurring virtually, there's an opportunity to pause, to reflect more deeply on the role music has played in both worship and in your church life. This is a transitional period and Part of my work as your interim music director is to help that reflection process. Imagining and dreaming what music ministry might look like in this church is something the whole congregation will be invited to enter into, as well as choir members. Because we're all different. The music in the church that you grew up in or the instrument you may have studied as a child, usually those things have special meaning for you, but that can vary from person to person. The rich classical tradition many churches have nurtured and cherished, like this congregation has, and many for many, beauty and meaning for many people, but others, may not feel the same emotional or historical connection with classical music. Whatever the style of music, something well prepared does help us enter more deeply into the worship experience. We don't want to have to be worried when someone's anxious or not prepared, but when music is a true ministry in a congregation, it is not mostly about the performance. It's about allowing the holy to enter in. Whether it is technically perfect or not, music that expresses authentic emotion can crack open the heart, perhaps like nothing else. In my previous congregation, we often wove silence, words, piano improvisation, singing. We wove them together into a time of meditation and prayer, somewhat like I did earlier today, hopefully to create a group religious experience. For to me, prayer does not require a belief in a deity. It's not a petition out to the universe for a specific answer. Prayer is the opening of the heart, opening to an awareness, a sense of gratitude of what is already here. Gratitude to the gift of being alive, the gift of the sun coming out every day. Well, maybe not coming out, but coming up every day. The possibility of forgiveness the hope of reconciliation, the ability of wounds to heal, the birth of a child, an unexpected hug when needed, the friend on the doorstep, the food served with love. Music helps us be open to these experiences. 
for a, cr a heart cracked open finds room to see, to feel all of these gifts. And music does it in a way that transcends individual beliefs so we can all participate as a community. Now I know from your comments and your passion and the many people historically involved in music in your congregation that, that you value music deeply and you're open to a variety of kinds of music. And even if a particular genre doesn't speak as soulfully to you personally, knowing that it is touching another person can help us appreciate it and the rich variety of human experience. Music gives us a space to be with one another in a new way, where heart, mind, body, spirit are one, and we can experience the beauty of this one day, despite what the night might have brought. Shortly after I heard my younger sister Katie's cancer had spread, I attended a women's retreat in Inverness, California, led by Kate Munger, the founder of the Threshold Choir Movement, a group that sings at bedside for those close to death. On the last day of the retreat, they invited me to lean back in a lounge chair in the center of their circle, and they sang to, to me. What a gift, a gift to have 30 women sing as I leaned back and closed my eyes. It was a song bath, an immersion experience in loving presence and healing voices. Months later, I sang the same song they sang to me I sang it to my sister as she was surrounded by 11 family members in her living room about half an hour before she died. It goes like this. I'm gonna lift my sister up. She is not heavy. I'm gonna lift my sister up. She is not heavy. I'm gonna lift my sister up, she is not heavy. If I don't lift her up, if I don't lift her up, if I don't lift her up, I will fall down. If you'd like to sing it with me, we'll do some different words. Let's try father. I'm gonna lift my father up, he is not heavy. I'm gonna lift my father up, he is not heavy. I'm gonna lift my father up, he is not heavy. If I don't lift him up, if I don't lift him up, if I don't lift him up, I will fall down. Friend, I'm gonna lift my friend up, they are not heavy. I'm gonna lift my friend up. They are not heavy. I'm gonna lift my friend up. They are not heavy. If I don't lift him up, if I don't lift her up, if I don't lift them up, I will fall down. Put who you need to put into the song. Maybe somebody's name, your mother, your friend. Put another name in. I'm gonna lift, mm -hmm, they are not heavy. I'm gonna lift, mm -hmm, they are not heavy. I'm gonna lift, mm -hmm, they are not heavy. If I don't lift him up, if I don't lift him up, 
If I don't lift them up, I will fall down. Let's put our leaders in. They need help. I'm going to lift our leaders up. They are not heavy. I'm going to lift our leaders up. They are not heavy. I'm going to lift our leaders up. They are not heavy. If I don't lift them up, if I don't lift them up, if I don't lift them up, I will fall down. Last one, the earth. I'm gonna lift the earth up. She is not heavy. I'm gonna lift the earth up. She is not heavy. I'm gonna lift the earth up. She is not heavy. If I don't lift her up, if I don't lift her up, if I don't lift her up, I will fall down. Thank you. And as we draw our service to a close, we extinguish the chalice and carry within each of us its bright flame, the warmth of community and the spark of hope into the days and weeks ahead. And as you extinguish your chalice, wherever you might be, we will join in saying the mission statement of the Unitarian Church of Montpelier. We welcome all as we build a loving community to nurture each person's spiritual journey serve human need, and protect the earth, our home. Your presence in this Zoom space has been a gift. A gift you bring to each other even when we can't actually hear all of our voices. There will soon be a day when you can be together again and lift up the power of the group voice and in your beautiful sanctuary space. One of the gifts of this unusual moment in history is the gift of imagination. Dream big, dream something new, remember what is important. You are not alone, you still have each other and the gifts of your collective imagination. The world needs you and your ministry now and in the future. There is music in our living. There is music in our dying. There is even music during a pandemic. If we keep singing our living tradition, this music is there when we need it most. A gift of being human. This is what music ministry can be in a congregation. Blessed be.